Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new build in my series, Building Nancy Drew in The Sims 4. Today, we are building the Bole Manor from the 17th mystery in the Nancy Drew series, Nancy Drew Legend of the Crystal Skull. This is one that I've actually gotten a fair number of requests for, so I... I had a spark of inspiration to build last night, and I was like, okay, I guess it's time for the Bole Manor. Let's let's get this ball rolling. Let's do this one. So this is kind of a fun house because it's very... It's got a lot of character to it, and a lot of the character, unfortunately, are some things that I wouldn't be able to do in The Sims 4 necessarily. Like, the house kind of is tilted when you walk inside, and I can't really do that in The Sims 4. But it was very important to me to try and get the vibe of the Bole Manor across, so very similar colors, very similar lighting with all of like the spooky candles and everything. And I really wanted to start with the outside of the Bole Manor first because I think it's very iconic. Uh, Nancy can walk up to this manor with the thunder and the lightning and the rain and it's dark and spooky and misty and foggy and I, I really wanted to make sure I could convey that vibe. That was definitely the most important thing. So I actually did the majority of the outside first before moving on it to the inside and kind of refining the floor plan. I do the actual decoration of the outside Side, uh, more at the end of this video, but we're seeing kind of the original floor plan coming together here. This is definitely a, a fun game, and I think that I sometimes don't give enough credit. Like, I sometimes feel like I forget about it, even though I do actually really enjoy it. It does such a fantastic job with, like, the very spooky, creepy, creepy atmosphere, and it honestly does a really good job with all of the puzzles. Even though this is such a puzzle-heavy game and it has so many puzzles, it doesn't necessarily feel overwhelming to me because we have this fantastic journal uh, that Dr. Bolet left behind that really kind of guides you through the whole thing. And I just love that. I don't know. I think they did a really fantastic job executing that. It could very easily have felt super overwhelming. And I think if you're not in the mood for puzzles, it still would feel very overwhelming. But I like this one. I like it a lot. So I hope you guys enjoy how this build turned out. I did have to um, end up modifying the floor plan on the second floor slightly. Actually, not like too much, just ever so slightly because we don't do split leveling in The Sims 4, so in the actual game, Nancy goes up the stairs, and halfway up the stairs is uh, the bedroom that we are led to assume was Dr. Belay's bedroom, and then you go further up the stairs, and then there's the second level, and that's where Renee's bedroom is, but we don't have split leveling in The Sims 4, so all of the bedrooms are up on the second level. There's also the secret room up on the second level. The floor plan actually makes a fair amount of sense um, just based on where things are placed in the game and where the secret room ends up being. Sometimes the secret rooms are just like in the middle of nowhere and it doesn't really make sense um, how you get there. But in this one it does. One thing that doesn't make sense, which I realized very quickly when I was working on the floor plan for this game, is that there is no kitchen and no bathroom and no dining room anywhere in this build. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very confusing to me. I was like, wait, did we see any doors that lead to what presumably would be the kitchen or anything? But we don't. They just don't exist. There's no doors to spaces that we don't get to see in the games. There's no extra floor plan space that presumably would have those kinds of things in the game. So I did have to modify the floor plan ever so slightly and that's what I'm starting to do here. I figured this area behind the stairs would be a pretty good place to kind of hide in a kitchen and then off the back here I figured it would be a good place to hide in a dining room. So you know essential things that kind of need to be in a house. You do kind of need a place to cook some food and you do kind of need a place to go to the bathroom. Which is funny for me to say because in the last couple of builds that I've done, I have forgotten bathrooms <laughs> in the Shattered Medallion build um, for the community space, did not include a bathroom. And in the Royal Palladium from the final scene, I forgot to do a bathroom. <laughs> So, you know, when you go to public spaces, you don't you don't need a restroom, apparently. Um, I did fix it before I uploaded the Shattered Medallion to the gallery. 
did not fix it for the final scene yet, but I don't think I've actually put that up in the gallery yet. So I will try to do that um, before I put that up there. It's kind of funny too, because I mean, Nancy doesn't even stop to think about using the bathroom in that game. She is just go, go, go the whole time in the Royal Palladium, which makes sense. And which is one of the reasons why I love that mystery because you know, actual stakes in a kidnapping, Ransom of the Seven Ships looking at you. <laughs> Would it be a wizard kitten video if there wasn't at least some shade towards one of my less favorite games? Probably not. We've got to have it. So now I'm trying to figure out uh, where to put all of the windows to try and finalize um, the, the floor plan here, make sure that everything works out okay. There's not a whole lot of windows or natural light in this game, which I think is what helps add to the atmosphere to it so well, is everything is really only candlelit, and even when there are windows, they're completely covered by curtains, there isn't a lot of light coming in, and even if they weren't, it's raining super hard, so there wouldn't really be any, any light to begin with. So... Now we're starting to work on decorating the interior spaces and I was actually really happy with how this front hallway turned out because this orange paint that I put on that first wall and then this wallpaper actually looks super similar to the ones that we have in the game. It bothers me a lot that the baseboards don't match, but that's just kind of a Sims 4 issue because we don't have matching swatches a lot of the time. But I was just super happy with how it turned out and these stairs with the like the brown and the white colors, the brown and the cream at the same time, look super similar. So things, things were turning out well. I was pretty happy with how this um, build finished up. I'm building it in Forgotten Hollow, which is the world that came with the Vampires game pack. I did that for kind of two reasons. One, the vibe just felt like it made sense for Forgotten Hollow. It's like a very creepy, spooky, gothic kind of um, town, which makes a lot of sense for the Bole Manor in my opinion. And two, the lighting of Forgotten Hollow is always a little bit dark. So even during daytime, which is when I'm building now, even during the afternoon, if you look outside, it's still kind of got this haze and this darkness to it, which I wanted to make sure the Bole Manor had because throughout the entire game, that's the only way that we see it. And it's honestly hard for me to imagine the Bole Manor being a very sunny and happy place. So here we are in Forgotten Hollow. One of the issues with building this in Forgotten Hollow is that the... The lots, um, the biggest one that I could find was without moving the Von Haunt Manor, I actually didn't even check what the Von Haunt Manor is, but I probably should have, was a 30 by 30 lot. So that's what this is on. It's big enough for the house itself, but I did end up running out of room to fit in a lot of the garden. I wasn't planning on building the whole cemetery in addition to this because that's just a lot and it's just kind of a whole big maze. Like that could be a whole other build all on its own. But I did want to add um, in most of the garden and I unfortunately was only able to put in like a small garden out the back. But the rest of the garden that I didn't include was really just the crypt, which isn't really something that would be functional in The Sims anyway. Probably could have included it, but that's kind of where we ended up with this one. Uh, with just the back garden out the back. So I hope you guys are okay with that. I hope you like it. I enjoyed the, putting the color in the back garden because that's really the only space that actually has kind of some vibrancy to it rather than like the dark and duskiness of the rest of the house. So the garden was kind of fun to do. But currently we are decorating the library and I really like how the library turned out. It's a little bit more compact um, than it ends up in the game with the current floor plan, but I think it works out really well. I decided too that I was kind of going to build this as the after is the time period after the events of Legend of the Crystal Skull. So the house is still roughly in the same kind of shape, um, but there are a couple rooms that maybe have some additional furniture. There are a couple rooms that have maybe um, been updated or cleaned up ever so slightly, uh, just because this is supposed to, supposed to be when the game is kind of more complete. That's kind of what I was going for here. So definitely wanted to add in lots of bookshelves. I was trying to get the wood swatches to match perfectly because this is a fancy library. So everything is like built in and very nice and uh, 
I feel like wood swatches matching is when you know that you have like really upscale fancy stuff because then you were able to purchase everything as part of a set and make it all look really good. That's when you know you've made it. <laughs> so uh, this part here is supposed to be kind of like the treasure shelf um, that Dr. Bollet has. Normally it would have been on the wall as the bookshelf that I just placed, but um, because of the arch there, I didn't have room. And I was going to put these medals from Strangerville in there, but it wouldn't let me. So I'm assuming your Sims actually have to add the medals to that case themselves, which is kind of a bummer. So if you wanted to, and if you had Strangerville, you would be able to do that. So over here is um, the fireplace area. And again, this fireplace looks really, really similar to the one that actually is in the game. I absolutely love when that happens, when I can find things that actually look a lot like the game. Same with this uh, ship here. I love that. It just, it, it makes these recreations so much easier, so much less stressful. Makes me a happy camper. The colors in this room too are just so like bold and muted at the same time, which I think is my favorite look. Like you've got these colors that in general are kind of like bold, courageous colors. Like you've got a red chair here, but it has more of this muted kind of dusty undertone to it, which is just my favorite kinds of colors. I love that with orange too. Like rather than a really vibrant orange, I love a nice deep burnt orange. And for yellow, almost like the curtains in this room too, I like a nice mustardy yellow with some more dusty undertones to it. Just makes me, it makes me so happy. And maybe because it's autumnal, maybe that's why. I hate to bring it up again, guys, but pumpkin spice lattes, I had one this morning. They are finally out um, at my local coffee shop, at my local caribou. So I got me a pumpkin spice latte in August. <laughs> Don't judge me, they're fantastic. It, it had to happen. It, it just really did. And honestly, it puts me in a really good mood and made me really excited to do the voiceover for this video. So we all win. When Wizard Kitten has a pumpkin spice latte, we all win, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you guys agree. And it's not just super obnoxious. So here I was uh, realizing that the back garden was not really gonna have enough room, so I kinda had to move the house as far forward as I possibly could to see how much space I could squeeze in, and I'm kind of trying to map it out here to see how much of it I'm able to fit in. I am able to fit in kind of the area where Nancy can walk and see the fireflies, which is probably my favorite place in the entirety of the mansion, so I wanted to make sure I included that. And then over here is where the loquat tree is going to be placed because that's an important thing. You gotta be able to have the loquat tree. That's important. You can't have Iggy go without his loquats. That spoiled little iguana. <laughs> he has his own tree. Like, good for you, Iggy. You have played the system so well that you actually have your own tree with your own personal favorite food. Like, I would love that. Ooh, if you guys could plant a fruit tree like in your home, what kind of tree would you have? I I don't wanna be basic and say that I would get an apple tree, but I might just get an apple tree because then I could always make apple crisp and apple pie in the fall. I mean, that would be really cool, but it would also be super fun to like have a banana tree because I love bananas and I eat bananas all the time, but I don't live in a climate that would support a banana tree, but in my ideal world, that would be pretty sweet. But then there's like more fun fruits that maybe would be even cooler, like, I don't know, cherries? Like how cool would that be to have in your yard or something like that? Yeah, and maybe I'm just thinking of that because I'm now working on this garden space. So this is uh, Renee's little garden nook and I am just filling these shelves with basically as many plants as I can possibly find trying to make it look very green, very lush. Every single plant in the game I try to utilize out here. This is a flower arranging table as well, so there is actually a function to this space rather than just looking very, uh, very jungly and very green, which is basically what the space looks like as well in the game. It's just kind of like a whole jungle space, and then Renee has her little work table, so. I was really happy with how this um, little area turned out. Again, it's funny seeing it in full light, like with the sun actually shining through, because we don't ever see that in the game. It's just kind of a, a impossibility to imagine seeing 
the Bole Manor without rain and clouds and gloom. <laughs> Seeing it actually being a happy, sunny green space is very interesting. None of these plants really look very herby, which I imagine is probably primarily what Renee grows. You know what I mean? She probably has like sage and oregano and rosemary and witch hazel and just like all of the all of the possible kind of voodoo potiony kinds of things. I feel like that's definitely what Renee is growing out here. But none of the ones that I have out there look like that. They kind of just look like your standard potted plants. So I guess use your imagination and then we can pretend that Renee is growing all sorts of funny things out here. This is super annoying because the, the floor plan was just one off and then I had to like fiddle around with this for an extra 10 minutes just to make sure that everything looked okay. But because of that, I did end up finding um, in the catalog this jungle adventure hanging plant that kind of hangs off the sides and cascades down. And that just felt perfect to me because then it enclosed the space even more. And this is also a perfect time to be doing the Bole Manor build because we just recently got these hanging plants with the Nifty Knitting Stuff Pack. So I could put some hanging plants out on this little gardening area, which I think is absolutely perfect because there are a ton of hanging plants out there. So now just adding some decoration into this parlor area too. Basically anywhere that there was a puzzle, I wanted to make sure that I had something that kind of reminded of the puzzle so we obviously have the clock the grandfather clock in this hallway which is like exactly what the puzzle is there is this really fancy and ornate grandfather clock so i tried to do that kind of thing for all of the areas in the rooms that um we have decorated so now we're going to decorate a couple rooms that we don't see in the game, but again, kind of need to exist, even though there's nowhere for them to exist. <laughs> but this is the kitchen, and I decided to go with kind of this green cover that we got from the vampire stuff pack. I figured since we're in Forgotten Hollow, I mean, might as well use as much vampire stuff as I can, really, really milk that effect. <laughs> but I actually like how it uh, turned out a lot. I use kind of like these old tiles. It just feels like a very old kitchen, but still a very nice kitchen, which I think is something that this house would definitely have. It's clearly a very old, very classic style house, but I don't think it's necessarily dilapidated. It, it is teetering a little bit. I mean, it is sloping inward. There are some areas of it that are starting to crack, but I think a lot of the areas on the first floor are honestly maintained quite well, given how old this house seems to be, and given that New Orleans um, goes through a great deal of bad weather <laughs> and has to put up with quite a lot. So Honestly, given what it has to go through, the house is doing quite well. And I just really wanted to try, to try and convey that with the kitchen. I wanted it to look very nice and still very uh, old, very old school. So that's kind of the look that we're going for here. The green cabinets, weirdly enough, worked out very well. I don't get to use those a whole lot just because it's kind of a, a niche look. It's not something that you see in a lot of houses. And it's not something that looks good in a lot of houses either, in my opinion. I mean, the style now is very much like you've got very neutral cabinets. You have white cabinets most of the time, and sometimes you might have um, more wood-toned cabinets, but very rarely. Am I able to feel like I've made a painted cabinet look good? So that was fun. Now just cluttering up the countertops here, trying to make it look like it's a pretty busy kitchen. Lots of nice fruit bowls, lots of fresh produce. So that bowl over there is the loquat bowl. That is specifically for loquats for Iggy. <laughs> because you gotta take care of that darn iguana. And over here I definitely wanted to make sure I put in a teapot. I don't think this is a coffee drinking household. I definitely think that this is a tea drinking household. Preferably using fresh herbs from the garden out back. That was definitely the idea I had for that. So very happy with how the kitchen turned out. Sometimes I feel like with traditional kitchens, it's really hard to make them look good, but I was very happy with how this one turned out. And I wanted to carry over a similar kind of color scheme and a similar color kind of style into the dining room. So again, it's just very, um, very classical, but it's 
primarily with kind of dark muted colors. The only kind of color that we get is really from the blue and the green and the curtains. And then I pulled that into the chairs as well. And to fill in the space, I end up putting things on either side of the dining table. So it makes the dining room look kind of uh, cramped, but I also feel like that makes it look more realistic. I think really classic old dining rooms are actually kind of more cramped spaces because the dining room traditionally would be a space where you would show off your wealth to your guests really because that's where you would you would throw a really fancy dinner party and then that's where they would come in and you would be able to show them oh look at all of my uh fancy china in my china cabinets or look at all my uh, priceless tomes <laughs> stuff like that you probably wouldn't necessarily have books in the dining room but i think they worked really nicely in here and I did also end up fitting in a um, big bar space, which I also kind of figured would be useful in a room like this. I don't know, it just gives you another activity, another things for your Sims to actually do. I don't know if it's functional because it's kind of stuffed under the counters and this is a bigger bar space, but I think it works. And I used some artwork that I don't typically use in the games. Um, for those that don't know, Willow Creek, the base game world that came with The Sims 4, is actually supposed to be kind of designed on New Orleans. So a lot of the base game art, and I didn't understand this until fairly recently, is very jazz inspired and very like musician inspired. And I did not understand that for the longest time. I was like, what is this artwork doing in here? It's so random. I thought they only added it because lounges are a type of a space that came with the base game, just like a musical lounge space. And I thought that was literally the only reason that they added it in. But I now know that it's because it's supposed to be New Orleans styled. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is actually a build where I can use these more jazzy New Orleans kind of style pieces of art and kind of get away with it more. Cause I feel like they really do not fit in the vast majority of builds that I do. But in this one, I think I was able to get away with it a little bit. I was also pretty happy that I was able to find these wall arch things that look very similar to what we have in the game itself. They do have a weird shadow thing on them because I had to size them up, but I tried to hide it as much as I could with the plant and then with the kind of photo collage, which is exactly what they have in the game as well, so I enjoyed that. I wanted to put those in there too because that is how you access the secret passageway, so I figured it was kind of important to have those. You can't actually access the secret passageway with those you would need to put in a door in order to access um, the hidden room that we have here but you can pretend because the space where you normally would is actually there so now I'm adding in the furniture to this little living room space I put the Brindleton Bay map over right here this um island map to pretend that that's like the cemetery map um, that Dr. Bollet used for when he was taking care of the cemetery. I do, we do actually have like this perfect book stand too that came with a vampire's pack that just looks, it's perfect for this kind of thing because it looks very much like the book that Dr. Bollet uses to keep track of all of the people that are in the cemetery. What doesn't really make sense here is this little cutout area. Um, that's not really in the game, but it is on the outside floor plan. For a while, I thought about making that like a downstairs bathroom or a laundry room or something, but then I decided to just kind of make it a piano area. So I play around with that in a little while, but first I wanted to put down um, this little seating area that ends up being next to the door because this coffee table that I'm just about to place here is a puzzle. So again, any kind of puzzle thing, I was doing my very best to try and include something that referenced that puzzle. So the marble puzzle that's normally in this coffee table is represented by the coffee table. <laughs> Shocker, right? So yeah, I thought about doing another seating area over here, but then it didn't really make sense. It kind of felt repetitive. So I figured let's just put another activity in for your Sims. We can do this really fancy grand piano. This is one build where a grand piano actually makes sense rather than an upright piano. One of my biggest gripes. <laughs> <laughs> Just as much as bunk beds for some people. I want an upright piano. Gosh darn it. 
So now I'm just kind of filling in the living room space with some more art. There's definitely a few places in the game that don't have rugs and it looks fine in the game, but in The Sims it just looks incomplete. So there are several places where I end up adding in rugs that you wouldn't normally see them in the game. And now we're moving on to the upper level of the Bole Manor. So this level ends up having um, two bathrooms and uh, two bedrooms, and then the big kind of hidden secret room. So again, in the game itself, when you come up here, there's only Dr. Bolay's old bedroom and Renee's bedroom. There isn't any bathrooms. So I included one big main bathroom, and then there is an ensuite in Renee's bedroom itself. So in my mind, Renee actually has the master bedroom, which is kind of funny. I'm guessing Dr. Bolay just didn't want it. Um, Maybe he's the kind of person who prefers a smaller bedroom space. I actually honestly prefer smaller bedroom spaces myself too. I've had both. Um, in Mr. Wizard Kitten and I, when we had our uh, first apartment together, our bedroom was massive. Like the floor plan was super weird in that the living room was really small and then the bedroom itself was huge. So we had a really big bedroom and it honestly was difficult to fill up with space. I mean, we put a desk in there, we made it sort of like a combined master bedroom and office kind of thing. But weirdly enough, I just didn't like having all of that extra space. And now in our current house where we live, our master bedroom is actually quite small. And I feel cozier that way. I think that's what it is. It's like how cats like to sit in boxes. <laughs> because it's a enclosed space all the way around them and it makes them feel safe. I think that's that's my deal with uh, small bedrooms. <laughs> Let me know if any of you guys feel the same way. It sounds kind of silly to say out loud, but I honestly think that that's, that's why. So this bedroom here actually um, is Dr. Belay's old bedroom. And in the game, there's only a really creepy nightstand with a glass eyeball in it and a creepy, rickety, dirty, nasty bed. But again, I imagined that as I'm decorating it now, this is after the events of Legend of the Crystal Skull, like shortly after. So I imagined that um, Henry took over this room and kind of made it his own. So I added in a couple decorations. I added in the makeup uh, tray there because I imagined that Henry Boulay likes to dabble in makeup a little bit. It definitely looks like he's wearing eyeliner in the game. So I think that's um, totally in line with his character. I used the fun little like llama succulent knitted thing as well. I don't know, the colors and the style of it seemed very Henry Boulay to me. And for the art on the wall, again, I used some of those jazzy paintings that I was talking about before, just because they seem to work very well in this space. And that's not always the case with wall art <laughs> in these games. It can be very tricky sometimes. These hallway ones are from the Vampires uh, game pack as well. So as I'm narrating this, I'm realizing that a large chunk of this house is um, done with Vampires game pack kind of stuff. So if you want to uh, um, download it, Vampires would probably be a great pack to have. I don't restrict myself when I'm doing these restrictions in what packs I use. Um, and I do currently have all of the packs because I'm obsessed and I just give all of my money to EA whenever they make a new pack. Not going to happen with the new Star Wars pack, by the way, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, <laughs> um, this one, if you wanted to download it, does primarily use vampires. It does use a fair amount of base game items. The whole bathroom set is cats and dogs for both of the bathrooms, so cats and dogs would also probably be a good one. And honestly, when you look at it, it's probably gonna be like practically all of the packs. <laughs> it's really hard to try and do a recreation and also limit yourself to packs. I have done like base game builds before just for fun and stuff, and I'll randomly put some of those up on the gallery even though they aren't, um, it Nancy Drew inspired or anything, but if you follow me on the gallery, those are on there. The link for that is in the description of this video, by the way, as is the information for the channel Instagram, WizardKittenYT. If you want to follow there, I do photo series and then post uh, things on the story, like um, Nancy Drew things that I might be doing in real life or um, cat, cat pictures and videos <laughs> because Mel, my cat, uh, is a frequent visitor on the channel. 
and um, we do also have a Discord as well. I sometimes forget to mention that in videos, but that is linked in the description of the video as well if you want to come join us on the Discord. So yeah, now I am trying to find a screenshot of Renee's room. I actually really like how Renee's room ended up turning out as well. Just a lot of the items that Renee has are things that we actually have in The Sims, like the vanity table and the rocking chair, which we just got recently with the Nifty Knitting Pack. So again, this was a good, good time to do this build because I wouldn't have been able to do the hanging plants and I wouldn't have been able to do the rocking chair if I'd done this before Nifty Knitting came out. So, good timing indeed. I'm glad I put it off now. <laughs> so now I'm um, looking for kind of furniture. Renee's room is interesting because it has kind of this like dirty blue floral wallpaper, but the flowers are only on the bottom of the wallpaper. I don't know, it's just kind of a weird style that I've never really seen before. It definitely works for Renee's space, like it seems very her, um, but it just looks interesting, I don't know. And I imagine that after the events of the game, this room is just kind of tidied up a little bit, so maybe the wallpaper looks nicer because it was just recently redone, maybe that's why? I don't know, could be. Let's go with that, let's, let's say that's the reason why. <laughs> And then there's this vanity table over here, and I just put a ton of bottles and um, concoctions on it to kind of mimic the fact that there's the sneezing powder and the crying powder and all of the voodoo type powers that you can get from Zeke's Curio Shop. Um, I really enjoyed doing that. I thought that was kind of a kind of a fun touch. So you could imagine that every single bottle on this vanity does something different, and some of those things might be mischievous. Who knows? <laughs> I use a lot of like the green sagey furniture just because it works nicely with kind of the natural vibe that we have going on in this room and I use it for the mirror and the dresser that I eventually put in this space as well. And again, this room didn't have a rug, but I think it really benefits from having a rug. Like it just defines the space so much better. I don't know why there weren't any rugs. Usually we have a lot of really nice rugs in the Nancy Drew games, but for whatever reason, the Belay Manor is just not a fan of rugs. Maybe it's because it's so humid down in New Orleans. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. Anyway, I have these voodoo symbols on the wall because those are actually in the game. So I decided to put them on the wall as well. The, the ones in The Sims aren't actually like voodoo symbols. It's just random Simlish characters. But I liked putting those on there. It was kind of like a fun touch just to add in. And then some plants again because it's Renee's bedroom. So obviously there has to be a ton of plants everywhere. Tons of books on the dresser, just random collectible kind of things. Lots of little curios, a very fun little area. And then over here, um, I eventually will be putting the rocking chair with the creepy, creepy doll. <laughs> I, that's probably one of my favorite moments is in the game is when you're snooping around in Renee's room and you turn around and thunder claps and moments before where there was no doll, all of a sudden there is a doll and it's Naughty Tina from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. I just think that's so creepy. It's so cool. I absolutely love it. So spooky. So I had to put this rocking chair in here because that's probably my favorite moment in the game. If I had to choose, what is your guys' favorite moment from this game? I think there's, there's lots of fun like cutscenes or like ways that the world changes itself which I like I mean we have that moment with Henry in the cemetery you have the moment with the skeleton man when you first walk in there's that moment with naughty Tina uh, when you are searching through Renee's bedroom there's the moment um, with Zeke in the curio shop so I just think this game does a really good job of including a lot of those those fun moments this is a very long pause here, and I think this is because Mel entered the room, and she was laying on her back, like, belly up, just exposing all of her wonderful floof, and was just like, pet me! <laughs> I demand pets right now! And I mean, when the queen demands the pets, I, I have to stop whatever I'm doing. So I, I think if I remember correctly, that's the reason for that really long pause, because I'm doing the bathroom now, and I wouldn't have needed to look up a screenshot for the bathroom because we don't see the bathrooms because they don't exist in this house. 
Because magic? I don't know. I don't know how they how they survived without it. But I'm giving them one, gosh darn it. Very similar style between the two bathrooms. I've kind of, as I've developed as a builder in The Sims, I've started to like feel like more and more that having very cohesive styles from room to room works best in The Sims. So like similar wallpapers or paints throughout the whole house, similar floors throughout the whole house, the bathrooms being basically the same style. For whatever reason, it just looks makes things look a lot more clean and cohesive in The Sims. That's really not how things are in real life, but I'm starting to learn more and more that building in a simulation game is not like building in real life, and things that look great in real life can look very silly in The Sims. So we have to make those, those changes here and there. Now we are decorating the very creepy secret room that we find later on in the game. So this one, I just tried to mimic all of the cracks and holes in the wall. I tried to make it look dirty and crowded. And I tried to include everything that looks like where we would get a puzzle. So like this treadmill is supposed to be the um, ski ball game. <laughs> it's the thing that looks the most like it. Um, this treadmill, you know, it's a similar idea, right? You could put a, you could roll a ball up that treadmill. It'd be perfectly fine. It wouldn't give you any points or anything, but it looks similar. We have disturbingly few arcade style games in The Sims and we have a bowling stuff pack. And I, now that I think about it more and more, like why didn't arcade games come with the bowling stuff pack. Like that would have been so good to include. We only have one arcade machine and it's from Get Together and it's huge. It is so big. I thought about including it in here too, but it was just massive. <laughs> and it, there's like no way that it would have made any sense in here whatsoever. And it usually doesn't make sense in any other builds as well. So say lovey, you get a treadmill. And I'm trying to mimic a lot of the things that you see in the game. So there is a flag on the wall. So I put um, this flag in here. There's a bunch of decorations on the wall. There's the tooth like diagram thing. There's a gumball machine. So we really don't have a lot of those things. So I just kind of put random curios all over the place, which I kind of enjoy doing because some of them feel very much like things that Dr. Bolle would actually like have around for no apparent reason, like the anglerfish. I kind of like the idea of the anglerfish because of the little angle that hangs off of it, um, which in the Sims game is a little, it's a plum bob, which I think is so funny and I've never noticed before. But that always looks like an eyeball to me, like on the actual fish itself. So I thought that was perfect to add on the wall because it's like, it's a reference to eyes, you know? We unfortunately don't really have any eye kind of art or like wall decor or anything that even looks remotely like eyes or glasses or anything like that. We do have a couple doctor things, which is what I'm putting on the wall now. So you have like the, um, the eye doctor chart where you have to say if you can see any of the letters. Spoiler alert, I cannot see any of the letters without corrective vision. <laughs> Shout out to all of my uh, fellow nearsighted fellow detectives. Um, let me know in the chat if you are also very, very nearsighted and require very strong glasses and or contacts. It's tough, isn't it? <laughs> and then like this x-ray machine thing here and then this puppet box, it's it's a puppet box. So that's supposed to be the creepy puppet that does the like the voodoo symbol talk. That's what it's supposed to mimic there. And then I just put in a bunch of boxes and random things on the walls and old paintings and everything. Tried to just clutter it up as much as possible. It's a very creepy room, it's a very spooky room, it's a very dirty room. Um, but yeah, I like how it turned out eventually. It's also got like nothing in the middle, which is also something that happens in these recreations because ultimately it's a video game. So Nancy comes into the space and stands in the center of the room and kind of rotates around to everything that's on the walls. But what may, ends up happening there is that there's absolutely nothing in the middle of the room itself, which is just kind of funny because then it's just this, everything's pushed up against the wall and there's nothing in the middle. Whereas usually we would have like a, a chair set or like a couch and a couple things and a rug or something, but nope, <laughs> big old empty space. 
So now we are finally moving on to decorating the outside. The Bowley Manor, it's hard to tell because it is so dark and rainy, but I think it's really just a plain gray outside. Like I think it's just kind of almost a cement-like texture, but with a gray color. So that's um, what I decided to do for the outside of it here. Lots of black accents. All of the windows that I used and the doors are from uh, The Sims 4 University. So that's what all of that is for. And I like how it turned out. Again, I think this is a very like, it's a very picturesque kind of build in The Sims because it has a lot of nice dimension to it, especially with this front porch here. This is something that I really want to do now um, in future games is to have this porch with kind of these cutouts and columns. I really, really like how that looks. And I switched it to nighttime when I was working on the landscaping because I wanted to see what it would look like in it, all of its glory. And again, Bowley Manor is really a game, really a build that thrives in the dark and the rain and the spooky. So <laughs> that's how I decided to landscape for the most part once I got kind of the idea of what I wanted things to look like. I've now switched it to daytime so I could kind of uh, do that a little bit more. But again with the vampires, I use these um, very creepy but very fun dead rose bushes and then like the dead trees from the vampires pack as well. I think it works perfectly with this. I love it. I have no idea what kind of plants would be super common down in like the New Orleans, Louisiana area. I know it tends to be very swampy. Um, it's a very like there's a lot of humidity and moisture down yonder. So in in New Orleans, um, but I don't know what the those plants would actually like look like. So yeah. I, I think the vampire uh, foliage ends up looking really nice for this particular build being placed in Forgotten Hollow. And now we're moving on to kind of the final part of the build, which is the garden. So I do a little bit of landscaping out here, trying to mimic kind of what we have in the game. It's just more surrounded by these bushes, just with its own faux fence kind of thing. And then in the middle, I stack it up with as many bright, vibrant, flowered plants as I can that look similar to the ones in the game. But we are starting to come up on the screenshots very shortly here. Let me know in the comments um, what you thought of this build. Do you like it? Did I miss anything that you were hoping to see? What other builds would you like to see in the future? Um, I love seeing what you guys think in the comments and I do try to respond to um, as many as I possibly can. So that's always fun. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. That kind of engagement helps us find more fellow detectives. And this is my first video since we've hit 500 subscribers. So I just want to say thank you so, so much to everyone for your support. You guys are such amazing fellow detectives. The channel literally relies on you to have any sort of success. So thank you so much for being um, as fantastic as you are being part of this fun little community. You guys mean so much to me. And the fact that we actually got past 500 before the end of the year just blows my mind because it was like a sort of goal that I had in my head that, hey, how cool would it be to actually end up with 500 subscribers by the end of the year, by the end of 2020? That might be really cool. And then we did it in August. So thank you so much. Thank you to any new subscribers who just recently subscribed. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. And thank you to everyone who's been subscribed for a while. You guys are all awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. So thank you so very much. Thank you so much for watching fellow detectives. I will see you soon.